I've been farming for since 1981. Uh, I'm, I'm technically not a farmer. I'm a horticulturalist. Um, and it's been a very long journey. And I've earned my living from farming ever since that day. Um, this is the produce and the pictures of the farm. There are other random pictures. Just to illustrate what we do, uh, Eat Well Farm is where I work. And um, uh, we, it's not just about soil, it's about community. It's about feeding people. It's about getting the involvement of the children. It's about cooking. It's about people learning to be, um, not just go to the middle of the supermarket and grab a packet of whatever. It really is, comes down to some very, very basic things. It's like a child coming into the, the field and I ask them, you know, what color is a strawberry on the inside? And they say white and crunchy. It's because they haven't eaten a proper strawberry or a tomato or uh, I don't like that. It's like, uh, it's about children uh, tasting three or four different types of chard and discussing which ones they like and the parents looking aghast and saying, I, if I serve chard at the dinner table, they just go, ugh, they'll never eat it. So really, that is, that is essentially what we do, but we have to have a really good soil. This world is covered with a half a foot um, of soil on average that we can grow in. And uh, we have to pr protect that. The Fertile Crescent, you see all these pictures of Baghdad and all that whole Fertile Crescent, it's brown, nothing grows there anymore because we've destroyed the soil. This has all happened before. Okay, we have to learn from the past. History is not something we really work on and we need to understand the past to go move forward to produce fabulous food for our family and our children. Okay, so a lot of what I do on the farm is to make things easy. Right, to grow organic vegetables um, or, or in a biological soil um, we have to have nutrients. Now those nutrients on our farm are provided not by, even now, I can say something now, we actually don't use the compost coming from San Francisco anymore. And I think that is a great success because what we did in year 2000, we took the compost that is made from the food scraps in San Francisco and helped enliven our soil. So that has been part of the process of renewal and healing for our soil. And now we no longer need it, so other farmers can use this compost to enliven their soil. We do it with cover crops. We do it with a whole diversity and techniques that I've learned from a lot of big farmers in the Midwest and a lot of fantastic new soil scientists who are coming out. I mean, there are about five ladies in this world who are absolutely incredible at this new soil science and learning what is actually going on in the soil. They've done the work that we've seen in the videos tonight to understand what is actually going on and along with people like Alan Savory and Gabe Brown, uh, Gabe Brown's a big farmer in the Midwest, Alan Savory's from South Africa, um, we've been able to understand how this works and use techniques to enliven the soil. So on our farm, I take, let's say, I take three parcels of land on my farm. One of them, I don't grow any vegetable crops for one year. And I plant the most diverse cover crops and grasses and uh, pollinators and all this kind of stuff on that ground. And I bring in, every time the, the, um, they grow to a nice mature state, I bring in sheep or even a tractor mower, that's my artificial buff buffalo, and we mow that down. And when the, uh, eating or mowing that down at a critical stage causes the um, plant to push out lots of exudates, lots of food into the soil for all the bacteria and the fungi to grow. They thrive in that environment right around the roots. And then the plant recovers and grows again. 
And then we do the same thing again. The sheep come along a month later or six weeks later or whatever your soil, how, how it and your climate can handle, that's what happens. So we're pumping the soil all the time, pumping nutrients into the soil for the uh, uh, soil biology to live. So we're building up a huge diversity. And the compost, when we apply compost to that soil, it helps bring more life and more bacteria into the soil to make it uh, a more thriving environment. And now it's taken me many years to build my soil, but I believe now with the techniques we have, we can turn a soil around in three to five years to a situation where it can totally be a recycling environment without the use of anything else. Uh, we, we also run uh, chickens on our farm and there is kind of like a cleanup crew too. So they're all part of the process. So after a year, we then take that soil and we plant vegetables solid for two years. And we just keep planting. We don't add compost. We don't add any artificial fertilizer, any organic fertilizer. We just keep planting, planting. And then we bring, in three years, we bring the animals and the cover crops back to the farm. So it's cycling, all total recycling. Now, what is really going on in the soil is all these bacteria and fungi that are right around the roots, they're eating all the sugars and everything from the photosynthesis. And then a lot, so, and if you test the soil, there's no nitrogen or phosphorus or anything like that. You can't grow a crop. So a soil scientist will come along and say, there's no nutrients there. You can't grow a crop. There's not enough. You have to put it on. Well, what happens during the growing season is the other soil life in the, on, in the soil, the arthropods, the nematodes, all these things that we didn't know about 20 to 30 years ago. We saw them there. We thought they were dangerous, and they thought they were doing damage to the plants. They come along and eat the bacteria. They poop out all the nutrients that are in the bacteria and the fungi, and the plant, it's plant available. It's right around the roots, and the plants suck it up, and they grow wonderful crops. It is, to me, uh, outstanding how this happens. It's made my farming really easy. Because if I spend a year, every three years, working on my soil and growing these cover crops and building my soil, I can then come along and plant peppers and plant tomatoes, plant radishes, whatever, and they grow because the soil life is totally providing everything that the, the tomatoes or the whatever crop we've got there is growing. So I, my farming now has never been easier. I mean, I really, I'm seriously, I've been doing this a long time. <laughs> it's never, ever been easier. Along with the chickens that we come in afterwards, after crops, to clean up any bugs and things like that, we now no longer buy any fertilizer of any kind. We no longer spray our crops, even organic materials. And yes, occasionally we might get a few bugs or environmental conditions around us, but it has been absolutely tremendous, the changes for the farm. Now, I'm doing this in the Central Valley in California, surrounded by fields of tomatoes for Campbell's soups that remain bare for eight months of the year. And they're putting on anhydrous ammonia. It's ammonia, which is killing all the life in the soil. They're injecting gas into the soils. And I'm growing in the next, right next field, I'm growing organic vegetables just like this. And there's no way they could grow these crops because their soil is dead. They're sterilizing their soil. I mean, the stuff that made bombs in the uh, Second World War, uh, they're using to fertilize their fields. And we are taking... We're using biology to do this. And the exciting thing out of all of this is that we can produce fabulous, fabulous food for people, but we can do it in a very short time. So whether anything happens, whether any changes happen, we can do this. We've proved we can do this. And really, that is the work that is really going on at Eat Well Farm. Whether you buy our food or not, we're proving that these crops can be grown like this. And the people that I have learned from, and any farmer or anybody can learn from because of the wonders of YouTube, is uh, people like uh, Elaine Ingham, 
uh, Jill Clapperton, um, and there's lots of other um, people uh, talking about what they're doing, and Gabe Brown, who are doing it on a very large scale. We're not talking about small scale here. I am not talking about small, small scale permaculture, herb circles. I'm a perma permaculturalist as well, but I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about thousands and thousands of acres of land that can be using uh, techniques to grow um, grain, grow meat, grow chickens, grow uh, soybeans, grow everything, corn. This is on a, on a really big scale for every crop we grow, grow fruit trees. A guy called Mark Shepherd in the Midwest, he's doing it in Wisconsin with Organic Valley. There are so many people that are using these principles that we've learned from the soil scientists and managing animals, managing pastures, bringing all of this together is very important. And it tastes good too, and it feels good. You know, I want my children to eat really good food. And we want, when people come on the farm, we want the kids' face to light up and go, wow and run around and feel safe, and people to come to the farmer's market and really have fabulous food and nourish their bodies. We can't treat the soil as a chemical environment. We have to treat it as a biological environment. We can't treat ourselves as a chemical environment. I know there's all this talk about cancer, so much cancer in the world, and we can't treat, we've got to treat our whole body and our whole soil as a biological environment. There's a lot of talk about biome, the soil, you know, what's going on in your guts, all those. Yes, we've got to, just like we're encouraging all the biology in the soil, we've got to encourage the biology in our own body. That's how we heal ourselves, we heal our soil, and we heal this planet. It's very frustrating because, you know, it takes a lot of people to understand and to work on this, and there's a lot of people with very big vested interests. I am, in the county where I'm grow, growing, I'm regarded as a freak and a nuisance by most farmers. You know, because they have to be careful where they spray, because I'm out there watching, defending my property. You know, and I have, I have members and families in San Francisco who are lawyers, who watch out for me, and the, everybody knows that, and so they're being careful. But we need to, we need to um, bring this to light, but in a gentle, calm, exciting way. And the best way we do this is to bring people onto the farm and to taste the vegetables and to see what life can be like. And I think I'll finish there. Thank you very much. We have to have you present more often. That was very good, very inspiring. Do you want to mention about the CSA boxes? Yeah, so there are many ways to buy our uh, vegetables in San Francisco. This is the farmer's market. Uh, you can become a member of the farm and get a vegetable, bo vegetable box uh, delivered to your neighborhood in, uh, in the San Francisco Bay Area and also all the way up to Sacramento. And uh, easy to find us is eatwell.com. We also uh, work with other companies and de deliver our boxes and deliver our produce, including Good Eggs and uh, Farm Box. Um, and a few restaurants also hold, uh, take our produce. Um, and obviously, it's not just me, okay? It's many, many people. It's 16 people that work together on the farm. I'm the face of Eat Well Farm, but they um, are very important, very skilled people that do this work and take a pride in it. And one thing I'd like to note is that when I first started farming, I worked on a farm where the guys that I worked with would finish work after 10 hours a day in the fields, go home, garden in their own garden so they could grow food to feed their families. Now they could take anything they wanted from the farm, anything they wanted to feed their families. But as they told me, they knew how it was produced and they were not going to feed their families with that food, right? And to me, the biggest thrill is to have 
Uh, my foreman uh, came last year with this big group of people, uh, his family and the kids, and they came around and they, were, they came out into the strawberry field with these kids one evening. And they all take home bags of stuff. I like it when they take home loads of produce, eggs, take home uh, meat, take home vegetables from the farm. 